One of the tools I reach for quite frequently in my shop is a block plane. Now I'm of the opinion that every woodworker should own and know how to use a block plane. Now besides some of the obvious uses you might think for a block plane, there are a host of other things that a block plane can do for you. Today I want to show you some of those unusual uses and by the end I hope that you gain a new appreciation for this handy tool. You'll find that block planes come in a variety of sizes and shapes even. I've got this antique little block plane here that I use on occasion, believe it or not, and it works quite well for a few tasks I'll show you here in a minute. This is a newer style, about the same size. Again, comes in handy for a lot of operations in the shop. And then you have what's called a pocket plane that fits really nice into your apron pocket and a standard block plane that uh, is typically used with one hand. And that's pretty much the definition of a block plane, is a plane that you can pick up with one hand and use. One obvious use for a block plane is to remove mill marks from the edge of a workpiece. So assuming that the workpiece is nice and straight coming off of the saw, grab a block plane, and you set it for a relatively thin shaving, and generally speaking, it only takes one or two passes to get a glass smooth edge. Now another operation that you may not be familiar with is smoothing out a joint after assembly. I made this little box assembly just for the purpose of showing different ways you can use a block plane. So when I assembled my box, I left the joints purposely a little proud for the sole purpose of being able to smooth those out and flush those out with a hand plane. And for this, I'm going to use a block plane. And when you approach a joint like this, you always want to go into the workpiece and, and not come out from the workpiece. If I come out the opposite direction, I'm going to blow out the edge of, of my wood. So you always want to go in towards the workpiece and just start working that joint. And I'm just taking really, really thin shavings and I'm making sure to keep the toe of my plane on the surface of the workpiece. And you can check your progress occasionally. And it's like I've got a little bit more to go here. Again, you always want to make sure that the blade is coming out on the side of the wood where the fibers are supported. So in this case, I'm going into the joint, into the workpiece where I've got some support on the back edge of this piece. And I'm using a low angle block plane here. It's uh, especially suitable for uh, end grain. Now by keeping the toe of my plane on my workpiece, it helps automatically level the joint as I, as I go. Now you could use a bench plane for this operation, but for a small project like this, I find it easier just to use a uh, sharp block plane. All right, so I've, I've pretty much got this one leveled out. And that's how you would even out a joint, like dovetail joints, or in this case, a rabbit joint, after you've assembled it and you need that smooth surface. One of my favorite things to do with a block plane is to ease the edges, take off the sharp edges of my workpiece. Before I assemble a project, I'll take a small block plane like this or even this antique plane and just run it across the corners just to take off a few shavings so that it breaks that edge. Because you know, when you build a project and you show it off to your friends and families, what's the first thing they want to do? They want to go up and touch it. So you want to make sure that there are no, are no sharp, sharp edges on the workpiece. And the second reason is, when you apply a finish, finishes do not like sharp corners. So it's best to always take the edge off before you apply a finish. Another operation you can do with a block plane is to create a beveled edge or a chamfer. So I've got this workpiece clamped on my bench and I'm just going to run this across the corner to create a small chamfer. And what that does is it just catches the light just a little bit and creates some interest in your project. So you just keep doing this until you get the size chamfer you want. 
And if you want consistent chamfers all the way around your project, you can measure and mark where the start and stop points of the chamfer should be on both faces and then plane to those lines. So it's, it's a really neat technique to just be able to add a little bit of interest to your project. Now taking that a step further, instead of creating a chamfer, you could actually do a small round over. You start with the plane almost flush with the sur one surface, take a couple swipes, then as you're moving the plane, you're going to tilt it or angle it right around that corner until you're almost flush with the adjacent side. That creates a really nice rounded over edge. Another handy trick for a block plane. So those are just a few of the operations you could perform with a block plane. Now, when I build a project, there's probably not a piece that goes into it that's not touched by a block plane. So I hope that going through this little exercise, you can try your hand at some of these and put them to use in your projects.